I've been shooting with the Nikon. The Nikon my, was my next switch. I've been using Canon cameras. Nikon at that moment. At the time, the thing seemed amazing, um, but cameras have come a long way since then. Over the last couple of months, uh, a lot of us have actually switched over from either Canon or Nikon to the new Sony a7 III camera. And we want to talk a bit about that today. Here with Melissa, Ryan, and Lily. Uh, Melissa and Ryan, they have their wedding coming up later this summer with us. Uh, really cool couple, and we just thought it would be great to work with them. They're going to be our models today. They agreed to do that, and uh, another time we're going to be telling the story as well. Uh, really cool couple. We also want to thank Al from A List Beauty. He's a friend of the East Corps and one of Toronto's top beauty experts, making hair and makeup truly red carpet ready. We're really grateful that Al is here with us today and we'll be putting a link to A-List Beauty in the description as well as on the blog article. I have been shooting weddings professionally for about 14 years now and I've been using Canon cameras almost exclusively since 2004. I've been shooting since 2001. We started a wedding photography company. I've been shooting with the Nikon for probably, uh, it's been by 10 years, maybe more. I never planned on switching to Sony. I was just hearing an awful lot in the photography community about this new Sony A7 III. All right, there we go. Let's talk about what everybody's talking about. We're talking about the Sony A7 III. I saw buzz online about it and then uh, what people were saying about it. So we started looking more closely at it. Jameson actually picked one up um, and said, Do that again? Like, the, the focus is just insane. Right now, what we want to do is we just want to do a quick test. We're going to use the Canon 85 F1.4L, and we're going to use uh, we're going to get a couple shots on the Canon 5D Mark IV. We're then going to take that lens, put it directly on the A7. We're going to really quickly take 10 shots, uh, just all automatic settings, just to see how everything looks in automatic settings. But we also want to then take them into Lightroom really quickly. And we're going to check out the focus. We're going to give all of the shots, 10 from each camera, a star rating. Zero stars, meaning it absolutely missed focus completely. You wouldn't give it to a client. Uh, five, meaning the focus is nailed right on the eye, absolutely perfectly sharp. So let's first try the Canon 5D Mark IV with the Canon 85L. All right, Melissa, with you right here, nice smiles. And I'm going to take 10 shots. The exact same lens. Now keep in mind, this is a Canon, designed for Canon, made by Canon, four Canon cameras, 85 millimeter f1.4. Technically this lens shouldn't even really work on the Sony a7 III, but we're using it with the Sigma MC11. Now let's take 10 quick shots. Looking right here, Melissa, and we're gonna get, get 10 shots really quickly. We have the Nikon D4S and we have the Nikkor 85mm f1.4. Let's see how this does. We're going to take 10 shots and maybe the only one in focus, no? Yeah. Looking first at just the color and exposure differences between the three cameras, we do see some distinct differences. My framing had shifted slightly between the cameras, but I think it's close enough to compare. We had set all three cameras to aperture priority mode with all other settings in auto and exposure compensation at zero, just in order to see how the cameras would render the scene. We've imported into Lightroom using the default settings with no adjustments and the Adobe standard profile. First, we have the Canon on the left. This is about a half stop underexposed and it's a bit too cool. Next, we have the Sony shot in the center. We can see that the exposure and color are both great. It's the closest to ideal right out of camera with nice, warm, great skin tones. And I would do very little to adjust it other than possibly make a very slight white balance adjustment. Finally, we have the Nikon on the right, which although has good skin tones, overall it, it exhibits a bit of funky greenish cast in other areas of the frame. 
Overall, I would bump the exposure just a touch and would play around a bit to correct that green cast. When we compare against a skin tone reference chart, we can more clearly see that the Canon is just slightly underexposed and cool. The Sony is definitely the closest of the bunch with nice, warm, lively skin tones. And the Nikon, although very close, does have a little bit of greenish cast and could be brightened just a touch. And originally with my Nikons, I thought, you know, the lens is beautiful. You know, everything I thought was, you know, I thought it was sharp. You know, I thought in my mind, okay, this is, this is as good as it gets. I could even micro adjust my lenses just to get that little extra, you know, little closer to that, you know, perfect sh uh, sharpness. Uh, again, and then I get this, I start shooting with it, I bring it into Lightroom, and then I zoom in, and it's unbelievably sharp. It's like right on the eye sharp. It's like eyelash sharp. Every shot, boom, 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 boom. We kept all three cameras in continuous autofocus and used a single AF point locked right on the eye for the Canon and the Nikon, and on the Sony we used eye autofocus. This is a very easy target as it's a static subject just a few feet away. We've assigned a star rating system to each image. Five star, meaning it hit focus right on the eye. Four star, meaning it's hit focus somewhere on the face, but not necessarily the eye, maybe the nose. Three star, if it hits somewhere on the general head area, but has missed the face. Two star, meaning it's missed the head and the face, but has hit somewhere else on the body. One star, meaning it's missed the body altogether, but hit something at least in the frame. And zero star, meaning there's absolutely nothing in focus in the frame at all. Looking first at the Sony, the bar is set very high, as out of 10 shots, we have nine five star and just one four star. Looking at the single four star shot, you can see it's actually quite usable, just that the focus hit more on the nose than the eyes. The other nine shots are all bang on, perfectly focused, right on the eyes. This is very impressive with any lens, but even more so when you consider it was a Canon lens adapted to the Sony body and in continuous AF. The Canon 5D Mark IV was a decent performer with four or five star shots, but we also had three four star and three two star shots, which demonstrates the irony of just how much better the Sony performs, even with Canon lenses, than the Canon camera with its own lenses. It's set up properly, so... Was it always this bad? That's what I want to know. <laughs> well, that was one of the issues that we had with a lot of most focused shots, especially with the prime lenses on the D4S. Yeah. Finally, we have the Nikon D4S. Let me just say that we were actually considering removing the Nikon from this test and video basically because its results were not great. We realized that there would likely be Nikon users out there watching this video and taking issue with the results, possibly criticizing our technique or claiming that we needed to micro focus calibrate our lens and camera. We actually did this test twice, shooting two separate sets of 10 images, once using just the center autofocus point and the next using an off-center autofocus point, both locked right on the eyes. We actually only had one five-star shot out of the 20 images and even had one zero star shot, meaning nothing was in focus. Micro focus calibration would not have fixed this issue, as that only fixes consistent front or back focus. We actually experienced front and then back and then front and then back focus error during our test with the Nikon. In the end, we decided that we need to include the results as it does illustrate some of the issues that the Sony mirrorless system avoids and how you can just trust the camera's autofocus system no longer needing to overshoot and chimp while you shoot. The focus, which I've never seen before, this is the, the biggest thing that I've seen, is just the tack sharp focus that you get on 99.9% .9 of your images, which is just like a crazy ratio compared to anything I've ever seen. I had some Sigma lenses that I was using with the um, with my Canon kit. I had a 35 mil Sigma. Standing there together. This 35 was a really good lens on my Canon, but many times when the subject was too far away, 
it would miss focus. The further away they were, the more likely it was to miss. I had points where I was shooting with this lens where I couldn't get the focus after trying 10, 15 times and gave up switching to a different lens. This is testing now. I'm gonna do 10 shots. The Sigma 35mm art lens in Canon EF mount was always a great lens optically, but was very problematic on our Canon bodies, especially with any subject distance greater than a few feet away. We wanted to see how this lens performed adapted on the Sony a7 III using the MC11 adapter. Matt took 10 shots of the same scene with both the Sony and the Canon 5D Mark IV. The Sony absolutely nailed the focus on every single shot, getting a perfect 5 star rating across the board. The Canon was once again a mixed batch. We had just one single five star shot with the rest being mostly two or three stars. Once again, this is just a testament to how well the Sony is using lenses designed for Canon cameras better than even Canon cameras. You know, we got together at my place, we put some, some Canon lenses on the uh, on the Sony and started shooting and uh, we're like wow this 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 thing is the Canon lenses work better on a Sony camera than they do on a Canon camera I couldn't believe it. Whenever I saw the mirrorless cameras, I always thought they may be subpar to an actual Pro DSLR like a D4s uh, or a Canon 1DX or a 5D Mark IV, um, just because almost equated the size to better quality. Um, so when you see something, you know, tiny like this, like, what can this thing do? Until you actually pick it up and take shots with it, it is ridiculous what this thing can do. Bam, right on the eye, you see the green on the eye. Let me take a picture there, and now we know. Play that back, zoom in. We got a 100% focus there, you can't get much more focus than that. It's almost too in focus. So, with our style being really photojournalistic, it's really important to get the shot as quickly as possible, with as little effort as possible. This camera just makes easy work out of just pointing and shooting. As long as they're anywhere in the frame, it's finding them. I don't know if you can see, but look at the face detection there and now eye detection. Ryan, give her a little kiss on the cheek. Now let's check that shot out, zoom in. Right on the eyes. <laughs> so the ability to switch from photo to, vi to video with almost no effort, just hit the record button. A couple shots and now I'm just gonna, boom, for recording video. Spot focus on them. Effortless. Where this thing is like cheating for photographers. I almost feel like I can give it to anybody, they're gonna get clean, sharp images right away, right out of the box. That eye focus is, it's a game changer. It's an absolute game changer. What can I say? Really impressed with Sony and what they've done here.